and welcome back to GM Construct. This is episode 14 of War Mod Essentials, and today we'll be focusing on the construction of a stalker drone. When we're all finished with this project, we'll have a little robot follow us around the map on four wheels. Now I've got everything we're going to need stocked up over here. Now, the reason we're using four wheels instead of hoverballs and thrusters to build this bot is because using wheels gives it a lot more flexibility when it comes to moving around terrain. Hoverballs tend to freeze things at a certain height. So, that being said, first thing we're going to need are some wheels. If you use the same model I do, then a torque of 8000 is recommended. But you can mess around with your torque value. Make sure, however, that the torque values for all four wheels are the same. Otherwise, one side or the other will tend to drag behind. This was covered in the first episode, but make sure that the rotating arrows that appear on the wheels when they spawn are all rotating in the same direction, toward the front of the vehicle. Alright, looking pretty good. From this point we're going to start placing wire components. Now the best way to assemble a wire contraption is on a vertical surface, facing flat. Otherwise, your gates might come out all skewed and turn sideways, and that never looks good. First thing we're going to need is a target finder. I recommend giving the target finder a pretty high maximum distance. This ensures that no matter how far away the target is, it'll still be tracking it. Not necessarily pursuing it, but tracking it nonetheless. So I set my maximum distance to 3500. Next thing we're going to need is a beacon sensor. As discussed in a previous tutorial, beacon sensors are designed to output certain values when tracking a target. For this one, we're going to output distance and bearing. Distance, I'd imagine, is pretty self-explanatory, being the distance from the beacon sensor to the target. Bearing, however, is the distance you are away from dead center. This can be negative or positive to differentiate between left or right. Zero is dead center. If you were to draw a line straight down the middle, you'd be standing at zero bearing. Alright. That being said, the next thing we're going to need is a gate arithmetic sign. Now, remember, when it comes to bearing, negative can be one direction and positive is the other direction. Sign is a function that will output negative one for a number that's less than zero, and positive one for a number that's greater than zero, and zero, naturally, for a number that is zero simplifying the bearing output to either a positive one or a negative one. The next component we're going to need is a negate chip. What a negate chip does is adds a negative sign to the beginning of its input. So a negative number would be output as a positive number and vice versa. We're doing this because we need one side of wheels to spin differently than the other side of wheels in order to successfully steer toward the player. Next thing we're going to need is a gate comparison in range. Inclusive. Exclusive means that anything that is in the range outputs a zero. But we want things to output as one, so we'll be using an inclusive version. What this is going to do is ensure that it's not jittering back and forth trying to steer toward us when we're standing almost right in front of it. Moving right along, the next thing we're going to need is a gate logic OR. The OR gate only outputs for positive numbers. So, Considering that the in-range will be 1 when we're standing right in the middle, it'll favor that over the negate, which will at the time be negative, in effect, making our contraption drive straight for us. Let's recap. When I'm standing on the right side of the vehicle, the beacon sensor will output a positive value for bearing. Those wheels will receive the value of 1 and spin forward so that the vehicle steers toward me. At the same time, the negate will make it so the other wheels receive negative 1 and help to steer toward me. Now all we have to do is wire it up. So wire target from the beacon sensor to the target finder. This will send my target data to the beacon sensor so that it can output my distance from the beacon sensor and my bearing in relation to the beacon sensor. Alright, now the next big thing we need to do to get this baby working is wire her up. So first thing we're going to do is wire A from the sign gate to the beacon sensor and select the output of bearing. Now, we need to flip-flop the value around, making it negative on the other side. So wire A from the negate to the sign gate, so that when it outputs 1, the negate outputs negative 1, and vice versa. Oh, 
Up until now, we've been working with pretty much ones and zeros. To change that, let's go ahead and pull out a constant value, with the values 16, negative 16, and 512. The negative and positive 16 define a sort of range that if we're within it, greater than negative 16 or under positive 16, then the vehicle will propel itself forward instead of trying to steer toward us. In order to achieve this, let's go ahead and wire min from the in range to the constant value of negative 16. In doing the same thing, let's wire max from the in range to the constant value of positive 16. And then wire value to the beacon sensor and select the output of bearing. We have, in effect, just defined an upper and lower limit for the bearing, which states that if our bearing from the beacon sensor is within negative 16 to positive 16 units, then all four wheels will receive one as a value and drive forward. Now it's important in the next few steps that we keep our sides the same. So on the left OR, wire A to the left gate, the negate, and wire B to the in range. Now, moving on to the other OR gate, wire A to the right gate, the sign, and wire B to the in range. Notice that we kept our wires on the left and right sides. This is very important. Otherwise, we'll have interference on the wheels, and it won't drive straight and level like we want it to. As is, our bot will continue to run at us at full speed, even when it's right next to us. Now, unless we want to be killed, that's not what we want to happen. So go ahead and grab a gate comparison greater than, and place it on the model. This is going to make sure that as long as we're outside a certain range, it activates. Otherwise, it stays still. We'll also need a gate, logic, and all. Go ahead and place two of these in the same manner that you place the OR gates. One over the other, left and right. And we're going to wire them in the exact same way taking left and right into consideration when it comes to wiring it up. Alright, and once we have all our components arranged as such, the first thing we're going to do is wire A from the greater than to the beacon sensor, and select the output of distance. Then wire B from the greater than to the constant value of 512. This is going to compare the distance output to the constant value of 512. Alright, we just have two things left to do before this thing's operational. First, we need to wire A from the N on the right side to the OR on the right side. And then wire B on the right side from the N to the greater than. Alright, moving right along, remember to keep your sides consistent. And we're going to wire A from the left side AND to the left side OR. Then wire B from the left side AND to the greater than. Now, to make anything like this work, we need to connect up the hardware to the algorithms. So go ahead and take your left side wheels and wire them to the AND gates on the left side. Then repeat this with the right side wheels. Wire the right side wheels to the AND gate on the right side. Remember, it's important to keep your sides consistent. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is all. Our bot is completely ready to go. But before we move on, here's what's happening. As I stand to the right side of the vehicle, the beacon sensor outputs a positive bearing value, and sign sends out 1 to the left side wheels. The left side wheels spin forward, and the negate makes the right side wheels spin backward, thus turning the vehicle toward me. This works in both directions. If I stand to the left side of the vehicle, then the values are reversed. Alright, let's give her a shot, see how she does. Well, it seems to have followed us perfectly. So I guess that concludes this tutorial. Which reminds me, I've set up some group pages, both on Twitter and on Steam Community. Make sure you check them out, join up, and get all the updates. Thanks for watching, and I hope this helped.